When one thinks of pirates, they usually think of names such as Blackbeard, Bartholomew Roberts, William Kidd, names that come from the golden age of piracy in the 1600s, but even back then, during the medieval times in the 12th century, when knights in armour rode through the lands, there was indeed a famous pirate, though he disguised himself as a knight. His name was Reynaud of Châtillon. Unlike other knights at the time, such as the Templars who fought mostly for the glory of God, or just medieval knights in general who fought for chivalry and honour, Reynaud travelled to the Holy Land strictly for wealth, riches, and power. Though he did come from a Christian family, it is mostly implied that he fought in the Crusades more for monetary gain than spiritual revenge, much like many other landless lords, adventurers, and fortune hunters that were prominent at the time. Before Reynaud became the most hated man in the Crusading world, his first conflict started with the Byzantine Emperor Manuel I Comnenus. Reynaud claimed the Emperor owed him a sum of money and, when the Emperor refused, Reynaud swore to destroy the city of Cyprus. Reynaud requested support from the Patriarch of Antioch and the King of Jerusalem to help him in his raid of Cyprus, but when the Patriarch refused, Reynaud stripped him down and covered him with honey, letting the flies bite at his flesh until he finally agreed to help him. This was but a taste of Reynaud's ruthlessness. During the raid, Reynaud kept his word and annihilated the island of Cyprus. His men assaulted the women, mutilated the guardsmen, and pillaged everything in sight. It wasn't until 1160 when he was captured by Muslim soldiers and put behind bars for the next 14 years in the Aleppo Citadel. During those 14 years, Reynaud developed an absolute hatred for Muslims and became even more greedy and bloodthirsty. It wasn't until 1176 when he was finally bailed out of jail by Stephanie, the lady of the Ischief of the Transjordan. Stephanie controlled the bastions of Karak, Montreal, and the southern finger of the Christian kingdom. Reynaud saw her as an opportunity to get back into power. Reynaud took the reign at Karak, with Karak Castle or Closed Nest as his headquarters. His reign in Karak was known for pure cruelty. It was even said that he encased the heads of his victims in a wooden box so that when they were thrown off the high castle walls, they wouldn't know when they would fall to their demise. Reynaud allied himself with the Templars and aided them when it came to battling Muslims, most notably the Battle of Monte Gissard in 1177. He was a great fighter, but reckless when it came to words and his actions. His most despicable action that led him to be the most hated amongst all Muslims, especially Saladin, was when he threatened to attack Medina and Mecca, the heart of Islam, and promised to defile and dishonor the cities before destroying them. He even went as far in saying that he would drag out the body of Muhammad from his tomb and demolish the Kaaba. Reynaud said all of this without a second thought. His threats clearly stated the disoriented and unstable mind of Reynaud, clearly showing that 14 years in a prison can absolutely rot one's brain away. Regardless of Reynaud's mental state, Saladin was furious at the former prisoner. Reynaud started getting into piracy by building a large fleet of ships which he would then use to raid villages on the Arabian and Egyptian shores. There was one instance where Saladin nearly caught Reynaud on one of his ships, but he escaped somehow and made it back to land. His schoolmates, however, were strapped to camels and beheaded. Saladin swore to capture Reynaud one day for the crimes he committed on his seas, and that was a promise he would swear to accomplish. This goal Saladin had motivated him even more when Reynaud captured a camel train and took Saladin's sister and her travelers into custody. The prisoners protested against Reynaud for violating the truce in which Reynaud responded with insults towards Mohammed. Saladin was angrier more than ever, and didn't even think a knight like Reynaud would stoop so low, but here he was. A pirate in a knight's armor, who claimed to have visited the Holy Land for religious beliefs only to show true colors by raiding and looting. Reynaud taking Saladin's sister and insulting his prophet was the last straw. Saladin first sent a letter to Reynaud demanding for his sister's return in which Reynaud tossed aside. He then sent another to release the prisoners once again. The letter was tossed aside. Even the King of Jerusalem went out of his way insisting Reynaud to let his prisoners go, but for some reason he still refused. The stubbornness by Reynaud motivated Saladin even more to reach his goal by beheading Reynaud and made his cause even more righteous. As the Third Crusade went on, battles took place. Crusaders and Saracens clashed steel. One battle in particular was the Battle of Hatton, in which Reynaud and Guy of Lusignan took part in. Nearly 30 to 40,000 men fought in this battle, Crusaders, Templars, and Saracens alike. But due to Saladin's expanded knowledge of battle and the lessons he learned from previous battles lost, 
Crusaders lost this round, and Guy and Reynald were captured. The two Crusaders entered the Sultan's tent. Both were in chains as they gazed upon the Sultan who was sitting on his couch. Every battle they fought in, every enemy they swung their swords at, nothing they experienced in their lives could compare to meeting the Sultan face to face. As the Sultan walked towards them with a cup of rose water, he stared at the two Crusaders who were shaken in terror and quenching their thirst. Reynald, who mocked the Sultan and his religion over the years like a petty child, thinking no harm would come to him, was trembling with terror. Saladin gave the cup to Guy, which Guy desperately drank, but instead of giving it back to the Sultan, he gave it to Reynald who was just as thirsty. Saladin, knowing that Guy had just broken his Islamic custom where a captor is supposed to give his prisoner water to spare him, said, I do not grant you permission to give him water. Saladin then asks Reynald one last request and that is to apologize for every crime he has committed. Reynold, as the stubborn brute that he was, refused one last time. After all the writing Reynold did, after insulting his religion, after threatening to destroy Mecca and Medina, and after imprisoning his sister, Saladin was more than fed up. He pulled out his crescent sword and slashed Reynold's throat, blood spurting out, and as the crusader pirate was gurgling on the ground, the Sultan swung his sword down Reynold's neck, decapitating him. Finally accomplishing his goal, he promised. He then tells Guy, real kings do not kill other kings and mention how Reynald wasn't a true king and was just a man who overstepped the limits. Now, there are different versions of how Reynald's execution played out. In the book Warriors of God by James Ruston Jr., the author describes that Saladin makes Guy stand outside the tent as he executes Reynald but can still hear the dying breaths of Reynald. Other books like The Templars by Dan Jones states that Saladin would spare Reynald if only he converted to Islam knowing that he would refuse that offer. It gave him an opportunity to kill Reynald with Guy right in front of him. Other forms of media such as the film Kingdom of Heaven have Saladin simply execute Reynald without offering anything then letting his guards finish the job of cutting off his head. Regardless of what's truly happened, the tyranny of Reynald ended in that tent and with his death the Sultan was finally able to move on to bigger goals such as capturing Jerusalem and dealing with King Richard the Lionheart. Overall, Reynald was no more than a common bandit who saw an opportunity to justify his piracy by dressing in a suit of armor and pillaging the Holy Land on the excuse that it was all for the glory of God. In the end however, he became despised equally by everyone, Christians, Muslims, the King of Jerusalem and the Sultan of Egypt. Thank you for watching this video and supporting my love for history, and I'll see you on the next one.